add to what was shared, you can do that as well. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on, right? Um, you know, you can follow in your notes. Uh, if you have your notes, it's uh, page seven. And um, okay, so we looked at uh, how Balaam prophesied, and it was by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God. Um, then we also see, um, you know, Joshua being prepared for leadership. Right? We 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 saw that um, God doing something for those elders to carry the the responsibility right giving them that uh, the same vision probably the burden uh, to carry out the le leadership responsibility those 70 we saw that then we see uh, jo uh, sorry joshua being prepared for leadership okay uh, and let's uh, let's read that uh, those verses as well so we go to uh, numbers 27 and verse 18 okay numbers 27 and verse 18 uh, the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, the man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation, and inaugurate him in their sight. And you shall give some of your authority to him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. He shall stand before Eliezer, the, Eliezer, the priest, who shall inquire before the Lord for him by the judgment of the Urim. At his word, they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, he and all the children of Israel with him, all the congregation. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He took Joshua and set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation, and he laid his hands on him and inaugurated him just as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. So we see that um, uh, that Joshua, there's something happening. He's been inaugurated or, uh, you know, something starting you know it's a new season in joshua's life where he is prepared or set apart for leadership or you know uh he's publicly uh declared that he is the next leader right before the congregation before the priest and uh, moses lays hands on him okay and uh then the spirit of god is preparing him right god gives the instruction um that Joshua should be leading the people, and he also prepares Joshua. Right? If you look at, uh, uh, and if you go to Deuteronomy, the last verse, okay, uh, the next book, Deuteronomy, and uh, uh, sorry, the, the the chapter, the last chapter, and verse nine is okay, now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him as and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Okay. Um, so we see Joshua being prepared, and we see here that Joshua is actually you know taking over um, the leadership. It says uh, the quality was that he was full of the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit was upon him, giving him wisdom to lead the people. Okay, and and we know that you know to we need the wisdom of God. To lead, uh, to lead the people, God, any leadership was actually right. Um, I'm sure we know the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is something that we acquire through experience, through reading, through learning, and wisdom is the ability to apply that knowledge. Right? Wisdom is the ability to discern. Wisdom is the ability to um, to take those, make those choices, and uh, with the knowledge. Right? So, um, so that is wisdom, right? and God gives um, uh, uh, Joshua the wisdom that is required for leadership. Okay, um, so that's, that's, that's something again, you know, like for leadership, for those of us who are leaders, for those of us who are aspiring to be leaders, for those of us who have leaders, you know, who are leading leaders, right? Uh, you are in a position of leadership and you are called to, you know, raise up leaders, um, uh, maybe in the congregation that you're leading, um, you know, this is something to keep in mind that the Holy Spirit, um, that he would uh, not only raise up leaders, but also empower leaders. We see that in uh, Joshua's life. Okay. And we, when we turn to uh, the book uh, Judges, we see several instances, right? Several instances of the Holy Spirit uh, empowering the judges who, who, um, who, who were actually given leadership 
over the people of Israel for a season, right? So we, when we read Judges 3, we read about Othniel. Um, and, okay, we'll, we're not going to go through all the verses, but um, let's just look at a few. Okay, um, Judges chapter 3 and verse 9. Um, verses uh, 9 and 10. Okay, then the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. The Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel who delivered them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. Okay, so something uh, happening every time the Spirit of the Lord came upon a person for a particular task. You know, that's how he moved in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. Okay, we have a question here. So can we say that the Holy Spirit came upon certain people to equip them for certain mission in the Old Testament? So the rest of the they did not have the Spirit of God. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, so in the Old Testament, uh, specifically, you know, um, just want to clarify that in the in the Old Testament, um, the Spirit of God would come upon people, enable them. Uh, it could be multiple people, but you know, like we see seventy elders uh, and so on. So or Bezalel and his team, uh, the uh, you know the designer team. So he would come, he would empower them for a particular task. He would come on prophets, uh, they would receive, they would hear the message, communicate that message to the king, or, you know, or maybe even during their lifetime, you know, he would be upon them. And he would, um, uh, he would do that. Now, in the, Holy, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, New Dispensation that we are in, the Holy Spirit is you know, available for everyone, those who make that decision to receive Jesus. Now, that's the key indicator that those who uh, receive or invite Jesus into their lives and they are born again. Well, the Holy Spirit uh, is, uh, he comes and indwells. Okay, so so we see that um, in scripture that uh, even this morning what we saw that he comes and he um, he's the guarantee. He, uh, he you know, uh, puts a seal upon that, uh, upon us. And he indwells us, and he's a. It is a sign that yes, we are new creations, and uh, you know there's something. There's a great redemption that's going to happen, and the fullness of redemption that's going to happen, right? A glorified body and and so on. So yeah, so that's the. Uh, that's true. What you uh, mentioned there is right. Yeah. Okay. So we look at Othniel. You know, so you see that God. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and some change happens. Okay, now whether they realized it or not, I'm sure they realized it because they. It says here that he judged. Okay? There was some ability that was provided to do the tasks. Okay, so uh, I mean that's great news. That's encouraging news that uh, the God would step in and enable us uh, as believers to carry out certain things to enhance our ability and he wants to do that he wants to do that you know that's why uh, you know uh, many times we we don't desire you know we're just struggling we want to do in our own strength and ability but there's something more for the believer there's something more for the believer this uh, you know when we study the in christ promises we see that in him christ has become for us of him christ has become for us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification so we have access to supernatural wisdom, right? Um, so it takes a bit of dying. It takes a bit of waiting. It takes a whole lot of obedience, right? But we have access and that's the great news, right? Um, so I can't help but get excited. You know, every time you study about the Holy Spirit, you read all this, um, just can't help but, get excited about the fact that God, that you would do this for us, that you would come and do this for us. Um, and, uh, you know, just can't, and, and yes, uh, we just, you just feel like worshiping, right? Every time you encounter these verses and you look at your life, you just want to break out into worship, right? Okay, so we, we read about Gideon, okay? Gideon in chapter six, um, and uh, this is verse 34. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet and the Abyssalites gathered behind him. And, uh, and this is the time when he actually leads the people 
game, um, the the three hundred he leads, and they go and subdue the Midianites, and and this is uh, this is the thing. So uh, the spirit of the Lord comes upon him, and before that, you know, very interesting that conversation that he has with an angel. Uh, angel of the Lord comes and says, "Lord is with you." Gideon is looking back. You know, you, he says, "You mighty man of valor, God is with you." And he's saying, "You know, who am I? I'm, you know, I'm of the, I'm the youngest, I'm the least, I'm the least of the tribe, and so on." The spirit of the Lord chooses him, comes upon him, right? And uh, and even after that, if you read, uh, you see that uh, Gideon still has some doubts, right? And says, uh, verse thirty-six, chapter six, verse thirty-six. So Gideon had still go, you know goes further and reasons and he asks god you know, if you will save israel by my hand as you have said look i'm going to put this fleece okay i'm going to put this piece of wool and uh, and on the threshing floor if there is dew on the fleece only and the rest of the land is dry then i know that you are god so that happens and then Gideon says, you know, do not be angry with me. You know, I have one more, I have one more thing. I have one more thing to ask you. You know, I'm going to put this out again. And if the fleece is dry and uh, on the ground that is due, then I will know for sure. So, but God is, you know, still patient and still understands. And he still says, okay, okay, you know, I'll do that. And, you know, you, you think about um, even the conversation that Moses has, like Moses with God, he sees the burning bush, and you know, and he asks, you know, um, I must. I'm. A, he says, you know, all his faults. He says, uh, all his limitations really come up. He says, I must utter. A, um, you know, what if they ask me this question? I don't know the answer. And then finally, you know, all the supernatural things, and and then he says, God says, okay, Aaron will come with you. I will speak to Aaron, and uh, Aaron will. I, I mean, I will speak to you. You you convey that to Aaron and let Aaron speak, right? And so all that reasoning and God does. So that's something that we see as well, that, um, you know, not, not only does he empower us, but he's patient with us, right? With the empowering um, to to really, you know, uh, commission us and uh, he believes in us, right? He believes that he can do it because uh, it is actually his power at work. So he knows that, um, you know, we can do that. Um, depending on his ability, right? Okay, so we we read about Gideon, and uh, and of course you know you can read about Jephthah, about Samson, supernatural strength, and so on. Um, then we move on to um, you know First and Second Samuel. We see uh, the Holy Spirit at work in Samuel's life, the Holy Spirit at work in in Saul's life and David's life. Um, so let's let's take some time to just uh, read through. Okay. So, uh, so what do you think? You know, is it um, uh, you know we are we're looking at things that uh, maybe which are new, right? Uh, and we see the Holy Spirit, God, um, uh, really doing stuff. You know, it's not just revelation. It's not just you know uh, helping people deal with sin. You know, that's just a big part of what He does for the believer. Um, but he does all these other things. You know, all the other things which we think, oh, I I need to, you know. I, I need to do it in my own strength. Well, your our strength, our ability is involved, our knowledge is involved, but he gives that extra. Right? He he brings in that extra because he brings himself. He brings himself. He gives himself uh, for us, right? uh, which is which is mind blowing. Right? Okay, so let's look at um, if you can turn to First Samuel and uh, chapter three. And verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there's no widespread um, revelation. Okay, so that's how for, um, we, we uh, you know, 1 Samuel 3 starts. And then verse 9, therefore Eli said to Samuel, okay, this is after he hears the voice. Okay, uh, The Lord called Samuel again, the third time, verse 8. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, 
go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say speak lord for your servant hears and so samuel went and lay down in the in his place now the lord came and stood and called called as at other times samuel samuel and samuel answered speak for your servant hears and the lord said to samuel behold i will do something in israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle in the he will perform against eli and then goes on to um, say what he will do okay so um, and and then we read about um, the fact that um, eli calls him and asks samuel you know, what it what happened okay and samuel says this is what happened um, so sam go and the lord was with him and and he let none of his word fall to the ground then the rod appeared again in shelo for the lord revealed himself to samuel in shelo by the word of the lord so samuel has this supernatural encounter okay. and uh, verse 15 uh, we we see that um, uh, there's a vision that is mentioned there right so samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the lord and samuel was afraid to tell eli the vision so there was something that the spirit of god showed him and that whole message had come in a vision okay um okay there's a question samson was having the spirit of god but still he was not able to control his emotions and anger then why was he running for gentile women when the lord gave the commandment that you shall not yeah yeah so the fact is this that uh, well god uses uh, you know uh, imperfect people Okay, in his plan and purpose, that's the classic example. We see Samson with all those limitations, with all those uh, you know uh, times when he disobeyed, and yet God using him to be a judge um, over uh, the people of Israel. Um, and well, the question is, you know, uh, you know, why does uh, God? Um, you know okay your question is why was why he was running okay why did he dis- in other words what you are saying is you know why did he not obey god okay we know that god's spirit was upon him why did he not obey god um well uh, the answer is this that you know like just like uh, how god speaks to us and relates to us god would lead us god would um, you know uh, warn us and uh, he would uh, you know he would instruct us but at the end of the day you know it's 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 up to us to receive and obey to hear uh, to listen and obey carry out you know nothing is automatic right um we can be the most anointed of people we can be you know gifted in several ways um but at the end of the day it comes down to character integrity and obedience right uh, now gifting yes it's important it's from god anointing it's important he desires for us to be anointed and to be you know empowered by him to carry out the things um and all the gifts and everything it's from him it actually talks about you know if you if you read 1 corinthians 12 you see that these are manifestations of the spirit in, in other words it's like these are god's characters being displayed manifest display of god himself right so it's all good but at the same time if we do not pursue him if we do not obey him then we will cause greater damage and we will rather than bringing glory to god we bring shame and dishonor right but god still chooses to use us yeah yeah the short answer is he's given us free will yes rosalind thank you okay so that's the thing so just because god's annoyance does not mean he's you know he's giving his approval on us right um, so that's uh, that's the thing that we are going to look at you know uh, we are going to look at this in detail when we study about the gifts when we study about the different kinds of gifts and also when we look at the foundation for the gifts right what we should do what we should not what are those um, guidelines uh, for the operation of the gifts and so on so we're going to we're going to study that in detail okay right okay so um so we we read about this and uh, and then um we go to chapter 9 and verse 9 
chapter uh, chapter 9 and verse 9 talks about prophets talks about seers and uh, in a formerly in israel you know this describes the scene there when a man went to inquire of god he spoke thus come let us go to the seer for he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer um the words used there are naba and uh, you know seer and um so so this is this would happen uh, so when people wanted to inquire of God, they wanted instruction from God, they would go to a prophet, they would go to, um, a, a, you know, a seer, one who would, you know, one who was given or one to whom God would reveal things in visions and dreams and, and so on. And they would, they would inquire, you know, this is what I have in mind, what should I do? And so on. And, and uh, we're going to study about the prophetic and, and, about how God would speak to the people and so on, right? So this is what uh, this is this this is a scenario that, that God would speak to certain people. The people would go and inquire. Even kings would go and inquire. What should we do now? We are in this predicament. We are in this situation. You know, what should we do? Right? They would go and um, inquire. Okay, let's move on to chapter uh, ten. And then uh, verse six talks about something where um, a, an instruction which uh, Samuel gives Saul, okay, King, King Saul. This is before uh, he becomes, he anoints him as king. And then um, he's not even, he's not taken up that position yet, but this is what he says. Uh, you will come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison, garrison is. And it will happen when you come there to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will be prophesying. Uh, verse 6, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Okay, very interesting. So he says, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and uh, you will prophesy along with these prophets and you'll be turned into another man you know there will be a transformation it'll be like you're a different person altogether because the spirit of god has come upon you okay um then verse 11 says then it happened this is what is the, exactly how uh, samuel prophesied or instructed him that's how it happens um, and then they, and the people are asking, what is this that has come upon the son of Kish, Saul? Okay. Is Saul also among the prophets? And, and so on. So, uh, so this is what happens. Like the Spirit of God comes upon him. He, he prophesies and uh, we see that he becomes a different man. Uh, altogether so we read about Saul and there are other scriptures that you can you know you can go through and uh, read about um, then uh, when we read about David okay first Samuel 16 and 13 first Samuel 16 um, 16 and verse 13 says the spirit uh, sorry that Samuel took the um, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So, um, so this is what um, the Lord would, uh, that Lord was indicating to Samuel, you know, to go to anoint a person as a leader of the people, as king over people. And Samuel did that. And in, in response to what Samuel did, so Samuel took a flask of oil and he anointed him. And in Moses' case, Moses, um, he laid hands on Joshua and he nominated in, in front of the congregation. And we see that the Spirit of God came upon that person, right? Uh, in Joshua's case, it refers to a spirit of wisdom. And here we see that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. This is chapter 16, verse 13. From that day, forward so samuel arose and went to rama um you know chapter uh, in the same chapter talks about a distressing spirit from the lord okay uh, spirit of the lord departed from saul chapter 14 and it's a very um uh it's a very sad verse really you know if you look at verse 14 but the spirit of the lord departed from saul uh, and uh, of course, it refers to the way the Lord worked 
upon people. The fact is that Saul, because of his choices, because of his decisions, um, in transgressing the commandments, in in obeying the Lord partially, right? Um, and and God saying that uh, He was actually displeased with Saul, and uh, and here we see the spirit of the Lord departed. Okay, so. Uh, in other words, it was like saying, okay, no more the leader. Okay. Um, so, and again, remember that this is the old covenant, under the old covenant and um, uh, in the Old Testament. Okay. So, so now, of course, if uh, we have the Hindu indwelling spirit, uh, you know, how would that play out? And how, what would happen? Well, we don't know, but uh, where there could be several things like the Lord would be, of course, grieved. If a person like Saul, you know, was there uh, in leadership, not obeying the Lord, uh, the Lord, the Spirit of God would be grieved. Um, there would be obviously, you know, uh, maybe less influence and so on. We don't know, right? But the fact is that God would, the Spirit of God would be with that person, you know, uh, and uh, and continuing to work, uh, continuing to speak. The Spirit of the Lord would be with the person, but if the person continues to disobey and walk away, he's free to do that. Right? He's free to do that. Uh, like we saw, he has free will. He can make that choice um, and go on. Right? And but that is not the destiny that is uh, planned for for that person by God. Right? Okay. Um, uh, uh, that. Uh, the verses following that also talks about a, a distressing spirit coming and and troubling Saul. And every time David would play, uh, the spirit would leave. So you know there could be questions. You know how can a distressing spirit come from the Lord? Okay, uh, come from the Lord, and uh, and you know is Lord is God also sending evil spirits? Right? Is all God also sending a spirit of you know depression or oppression well the answer is this you know it's uh, yes that is how it is described you know but we know that god took his hand off saul okay and uh, in another, in other words it's like saying okay god you know saul has moved uh, from away from the hand of hand of hand of god right he had moved away from the lord's protection and here was this spirit coming and disturbing, right? And we see that every time the person who was actually an anointed man of God, right, David, he would play the harp and the spirit will actually leave, right? Um, so that is what we see there. So okay, so it's not that God would, God is sending both the Holy Spirit and evil spirit, right? That's not the thing. The fact is that he has moved from, from away from God's protection, uh, the spirit of God leaves, and some other spirit, distressing spirit, comes and troubles. Right, so, so that that is how we would infer. That is how we would understand. Okay. Um, Second Samuel twenty three, we see that um, uh, the psalmist at work. Second uh, Samuel twenty three and verse two. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. And, uh, you know, these are the words uh, he, uh, he's actually uh, King David. He's described as the sweet psalmist of Israel. Okay, sweet psalmist of Israel, the anointed of the God, uh, of, of the God of Jacob, right? And um, it, it, this is the experience. He says, uh, um, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word, was on my tongue and uh, you know we know that he he prophesied he wrote prophetic songs he he wrote songs of adoration and worship and uh, and, and you know there were others who wrote as well but um, you know he, uh, psalms of david um, you know we see that it's part of the uh, tehillim or the psalms right? book of psalms right and uh, uh, so we see that um, uh, like you know, Sidkin, you asked right the question. You know, how can a person who's used by God in such a way, and how can you know David also made those um, uh, 
uh, uh, made those choices to disobey God, to walk away from God, uh, and and so on. And and we see that Nathan uh, Nathan comes to bring in correction in uh, in David's life. Right. So let's look at Second um, Samuel seven and. Um, Okay. Second uh, Samuel seven and uh, was this? Uh, um, one to seventeen. Okay. So we see um, uh, one to seventeen. Okay, this is about uh, uh, the. I'm sorry. This is not the correction, but actually about the design of uh, uh, of the temple and uh, how he gives David the design, but actually it's Solomon who will actually, you know, uh, build right. So that um, that that is what is described uh, here. So um, so that is what we see here. Okay. So we read about uh, Bathsheba much later, right? If we read about in in eleven and then in verse twelve. Sorry, chapter 12 is where uh, uh, Nathan comes and then he brings in that correction again by the Spirit of God, where God speaks to Nathan and he brings correction and so on. So we see that, you know, all this happening in First Samuel, in Second Samuel, where the Holy Spirit is at work, um, raising up leaders, um, uh, bringing in a correction. A birthing prophetic songs or psalms and and so on okay um so let's let's move on to um uh, first kings second kings uh, if there are any questions or if anything that you want to share here you could do that okay anything more or anything that you noticed you could share that as well okay Fine. Okay, let's go to First um, Kings, Second Kings. Okay, we read about Elijah, First um, uh, Kings chapter eighteen. And verse twelve, first Kings eighteen to twelve. So um, so this is what God tells uh, uh, Elijah. Um, and in, in fact, um, uh, you know, God tells. Um, uh, let's read from uh, okay, uh, Obadiah, okay, uh, uh, about Obadiah and uh, verse seven onwards. Now, as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him and fell on his face and said, "Is that you, my lord, Elijah?" And he answered, "It is I. Go tell your master, Elijah is here." So he said, you know, how have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? For as the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. And when they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here. Okay. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from from you that the spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. So when I go and tell Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me. And I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Okay, so uh, so Ahab is uh, is actually uh, after Elijah and he's hunting down uh, Elijah. And uh, here's Obadiah. Uh, so it is after you know that Jezebel kills the prophets of the Lord, and uh, and Obadiah. We read that Obadiah actually took a uh, hundred prophets and hid them, and and provided for them, and uh, and kept them safe, and so on. So, um, so that that's Obadiah, right? So uh, Elijah meets him, and um, Elijah says, "Go tell your master, Elijah's here." Okay, now. Uh, Obadiah's response is quite um, it's interesting. Okay, he says, you know, I, I know this is my master. He's been hunting for you. He's been looking for you to kill you and so on. And then he says, now you're saying Elijah is here. You want me to pass on that information? Now this is what will happen. You know, as soon as I am gone from you, as soon as I go from here to tell Ahab, 
the spirit of the lord will carry you to a place i do not know okay so which is common knowledge then that uh, well god would actually supernaturally transport people or you know in this case specifically okay we, maybe we should not say people you know would transport elijah right and uh, so he's like he's saying you know the god would spirit of god will do that and then i we would come and we would see and uh, you will not be here and uh, and then you know i'll be in trouble right he will kill me so um, so that's that's something very interesting that we see you know that that god uh, the holy spirit uh, moved in these ways okay and we see that happening in the new testament times as well we are going to look at the book of acts and we see a parallel there as well right if we uh, when we when we read the uh, uh, acts and we when we read about philip uh, we see that the spirit of god conveyed philip or you know transported philip uh, supernaturally okay so we see that happening um, that god did this amazing thing and it's attributed to the holy spirit that the holy spirit well nothing is difficult for him right uh it's he's the one who who was brooding over the waters of the earth and you know birth things into existence so it's it's not difficult for him so we see that and um okay uh, we have some more time and uh, i just want to yeah some question here okay first samuel 28 how would that woman uh medium and would bring up prophet samuel to talk to king saul was she operating under demonic influence um if yes the person came up was prophet uh, yeah so uh, john i'm not really sure i'm uh, of the specifics of this you know we know that um, god gave clear instructions that uh, that we should not consult mediums and we should not consult the spirits uh, of you know of people who are dead and um because that uh, you know obviously the, the 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 reason was that we would connect with the demonic and god did not want uh, us to have to do that so but here is Saul and he goes on and then he uh, you know he, he consults this uh, uh, medium and because he wants those things and then um well the we see that the medium herself the witch herself is uh, is actually surprised okay when when the spirit uh, when samuel's spirit comes up it's referred to as samuel's spirit and um, and then uh, you know so all that thing happened so so i was it just an exception that happened there uh, when that's when when that in that particular instance Uh, or was it a demonic spirit which came up now we yeah, we really don't know i really haven't studied it too much to uh, you know to come to any conclusion like that but all that we uh, know is that it's something that god did not want people to do and uh, but uh, samuel went i'm uh, sorry saul went ahead and did that so uh, what what can we conclude you know was it the spirit of samuel we know that uh, Uh, old testament saints were in the in the place called you know abraham's bosom you know we read about that so um so what really happened i sorry john i don't know really the answer is i don't know uh, maybe maybe we could uh, you could put that question actually in that um, in that link um the holy spirit uh, question link so let's let's study that let's uh, you know let's see i'm not sure if you have a clear cut answer you know but we'll we'll look at it okay how to grow in the anointing of songwriting ruben okay yeah ruben um so um songwriting is both um, okay we'll 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 actually look at it uh, when we when it, when we actually um, um study the gift of prophecy there's a you know uh, th- there is a section on prophetic worship so we look at that but but very quickly um uh, it it involves both natural and also the the spiritual aspect natural aspect is uh, you know the the 
the natural um, uh, aspect of uh, knowing the skill, you know, skill in songwriting. You know, there is inspiration, but there is also intention, intentional writing that happens. Uh, when it, when we say um, inspiration, well, the Holy Spirit inspires us, gives us the tune, gives us the words, and then we, you know, we we put that down, and maybe the whole song is done, you know, in a in, a, in an instant. But there are times when the Holy Spirit inspires us, or we have read something we have studied, and intentionally we write, right? So it involves both. Uh, that so uh, so uh, if if it is uh, song writing right so it involves both so we need to be aware of that how can it grow in the anointing uh, well uh, it comes to uh, uh, I think it comes to persisting comes to following uh, the Lord and also it uh, it is a, it's a question of living actually you know it's a lifestyle where we seek the Lord we walk uh obediently uh in what we walk in obedience we follow out carry out his instructions and also um you know he reveals right as we study as we hunger for more of him he reveals and uh, and that revelation uh becomes the the material or the or the firewood for the for the songs to be birthed right for the fire to be lit so um so it's 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 a process so that where we uh, and definitely, like you, you know, like, like you asked the question, it, we can grow, right? Uh, but it's a process. We continue in it. Uh, we continue to write. We continue to uh, do it, and then we grow. Um, okay, Jeffina, what if Holy Spirit came upon people to accomplish certain tasks? Now, in New Testament, He dwells in us. Does it mean that we have something to accomplish every day for the kingdom of God? Yes, uh, in the sense. Um, uh, see that he indwells us and also you know he he baptizes us and fills us this uh, you know Paul writes and he says be filled with the spirit and there is an anointing for the appointment or the calling um, that each of us have or that for the task each of us have so he indwells us and um, definitely you know he speaks to us leads us um, and uh, reveals scriptures to us quickens us uh, quickens the word to us and so on and also uh, for the tasks that uh, you know there could be uh, specific tasks you know that each one of us are called to do maybe you know when we look at it as a life's calling okay um, and um, we are called to do that and it it need not be always you know what we know as full time ministry right it could be anything it could be maybe your call to uh, the medical field or maybe your call to you know uh, uh, politics uh, you know uh, maybe your call to administration whatever it is and the lord empowers us specifically for those uh, anoints us specifically for those areas right and uh, he indwells us at the same time, he also empowers us specifically for those things, for those tasks. So, um, well, the answer is we have something to accomplish every day. Yes, we, as we go about our daily thing. But there are those moments when there are those specific tasks that he wants or specific areas that he wants us to enter into, uh, even as we live out every day for him and for which he anoints us specifically. Um, yeah, so that's the thing, right? Okay. Mm. Okay, the supernatural phenomenon that was experienced by the heroes of the Old Testament, uh, can we, if we are strong in faith, uh, can we also experience that today? Yeah, um, definitely, I believe that. And um, it's, uh, it's something for us to walk in, and it's something that's available for all of us. Okay, it, uh, what, what will it take? It will take us hungering for more of him. It will take us dying to the flesh. Uh, definitely, you know, it'll, it, it'll take all of that as we live a, a life of consecration, as we uh, live in the center of his will, right? And, and the thing is this, you know, um, God actually wants to display himself, his power in and through us. Right. So if you look at the commission, you know, the Great Commission, um, let's, uh, you know, maybe if you look at um, uh, Mark 16, right? Um, okay, um, Mark 16, he who believes and is baptized, 
Mark 16 verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick that they will recover. Now, these are, these are, these are supernatural things, right? And, uh, and what is the Lord Jesus saying that he's saying, you know, uh, this is what uh, will follow those who believe. And one who believes and is baptized will be saved. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will do these things. So the Lord is, uh, you know, the supernatural ministry uh, phenomena. Uh, God wants to confirm the preaching of his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And God wants each one of us to walk in it. Not as a badge of honor for ourselves. You know, not as something for us to show or put on show no, God wants to display himself, right? And and what does he do? These are all good things, right? These are to dismantle the work of the enemy, to bring to light the truth, right? And dismantle the work of the enemy. Um, if you read Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good. You study the earthly ministry of the Lord. What, what good did he do? Well, he went about preaching, teaching, healing, delivering, right? So that is what we are called to walk in, in his footsteps. And uh, this is for us as well. Very much so. Okay. Okay, which Bible translation are you reading from? Okay, uh, what I have is a New King James Version, right? Uh, Holy, uh, Holy Spirit departed from Saul because it did not fulfill the commands of God. In says, what happens if we grieve the Spirit? Well, uh, if we continually grieve the Spirit, he, uh, the, obviously, you know, uh, our flesh is what manifests, and we we find it difficult to hear His voice, you know, uh, because uh, the Bible talks about how the carnal man cannot uh, cannot actually obey God. Because he's is he's carnally minded, right? So, well, the spirit will continue to speak, continue to warn, and uh, but the thing is, his voice seems so feeble because I'm more tuned to the flesh than to the spirit, right? So, um, so it, the end could be disastrous. Right? We open our lives to the work of the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We place ourselves away from God's protection. You know, we place ourselves. That is not God's best. Okay, oh, Rintu, you're here. Okay, um, I was wondering whether you could. Um, okay, how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Okay, uh, maybe this question also. If you can, you know, put in the link. If you go to the stream, put in the link where we are having all the questions. We'll we'll address that. Okay, but now I have to end the class, and uh, we will take it up next class. Some good questions here. Uh, you know, we put it in the question bank and then we'll answer that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great class. Good questions. And God bless you all.